Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic and Trade Group, and today is Monday, August 9th, and this is your end of day market recap. Uh, risk disclaimer in front of you: everything that we're going through here is for information purposes only, not giving any, not giving out any advice or recommendations. This video is for education purposes only. If the screen is a little bit blurry, it's just because YouTube has not. Ren finished rendering their high definition video which takes some time so please be a little bit patient with that let me just zoom in so you can see the um so you can see the performance for the day but uh, theme of the day uh, you know i always talk about the indices first and and the bigger picture and then i will talk about some of the trade setups for the day and single stocks moves but in the in the bigger picture the um the indices were really like choppy uh tight range we've kind of been seeing this uh you know a few days of the week especially since we are now like right in the middle i was gonna say the heart of the summertime but it's really you know the heart of the summertime means kind of it's calm so i don't know i don't think that's the right way to describe it but the s p was just down uh less than 10 basis points Re like i said really tight range you could see the percentage change from the open was less than 10 basis points um uh, the Qs, same thing. They outperformed, but they didn't really move uh, throughout the session. The small caps had a little bit of a bigger range. They finished down uh, a little bit more than a half a percent down for the session. But um, again, you know, we're talking about like a third of a percentage point in terms of range. So, you know, there's nothing really to kind of overanalyze here, in my opinion. Uh, so we won't spend much time here. You know, you could see that we're above value for the week. Um, that's probably the one thing to kind of um, mention here is that we, we're both, if you look at these one hour charts, which, you know, again, are useful because we have a new value area for you know, every Monday, right? For the we we like to go over the the levels to watch uh, once we get to Monday because we have a new value area on the one hour chart, which is based on last week's price action, and it usually um, ends up being a pretty good support resistance level to watch. So this week's value area, the the support to watch for the week is going to be four four one six, right? As long as we're above value for the week, uh, you know, we continue in price discovery, right? Everybody else can. Guess what's going to happen? Oh, we should be going down. We should be going up. Well, I know as long as we're above 4416, um, this market is trending higher. Same thing if you want to look at the Qs on the one hour chart. Again, not as much bumper room there, uh, but we are above value. 36822 is the level there. And again, here's where it looks a little bit different. If you want to look at um, small caps, um, notice they are inside value and um, so meaning more range bound, even more choppier. Um, they are not in price discovery. They um, had a nice rally towards the end of last week, but um, notice that version point of control takeout in IWM and now just kind of sitting back um, within this uh, sideways range that we're in. So that's it for the indices. Uh, you know, a couple other things to mention. Let's see, did I want to talk about anything else in the indices? Um, just that TLT, right? Uh, you know, I think it's important to kind of keep an eye on TLT as we've been saying for a while. Um, notice it's kind of sold off through the session, right? I tend to look at bond future, the 30 year bond futures. Um, you know, we did see some things like, um, so, so again, back actually back below the 200-day moving average, we talked about this pre-market. Um, bond the price was right at the 200-day moving average. So, you know, we'll see if we can kind of get down here to this bottom of value, right? You could see the bearish 80% rule is now in play, right? If we start the period above value and we get into the val and, and we get into the value area, this is the value area for the month, right? Which again is based on the volume profile, so uh, volume at price. Um, we are now inside value, and you know we could be seeing a move down to 162 at this point. Um, so again, a little bit higher yields. Uh, keep an eye on names like Goldman, uh, which have you know continued to see the call activity. Um, nice performance today. Closed very close to 400. Hit a high of 404. Um, I know this has been the name that's been seeing the call activity, but Morgan Stanley actually looks nicer to me. Right? Again, it's kind of funny how that happens. Right? When some when there's calls on the tape, everybody goes bananas. But sometimes it's not the it's not the best performing name. Right? Um, so Morgan Stanley looks stronger to me, and that's the name that we actually have in the TTG trend portfolio, which we added a few weeks back, um, right around earnings date. I think it was this date. 
if I'm not mistaken, it was 722 where, where we added that in. You know, so first first time I saw this break above value. Again, good illustration, by the way, hindsight 2020. But um, you know, this was the first break above value, and since then we're in price discovery. Right. So a lot of people ask me, how do you trade with the market webs, right? which is our own proprietary indicator? Um, how do I use the value areas to trade? Well, there's a precise example. Here's your break above value. It's doing something different. Um, notice it came back and back checked. And since then, it's been making um, new highs and out and out to the right. Right. Next uh, stopping point could be 103, which is an extension away from the August value area. So what were the, some of the big moves today? Well, there was a, there was a, a decent amount to talk about. Um, clean energy stocks actually performed quite nicely for the day. They actually uh, performed the best from the open. So that's PBW. Uh, one of our names that we was in the was in the weekend watch list was. Uh, so here, here's this ETF. Again, it's very sideways to me. So again, what's nice is you could always look for winners. Uh, SEDG gave back the gain, some of the gains. I did take a target right around 300 today. Um, but I, I, I like this chart. And if we go into PBW, um, just to see the movers, which I like to go through um, and the best performers. Fuel Cell um, actually was up 14%. Plug was up uh, 8% out of those hydrogen names. Let's just see, I haven't I haven't looked at this name in a while. Yeah, it's you know just kind of moving off those lows. Nice volume, those from the lows, but um, if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you know that I don't like names and downtrends. I know there's a lot of young traders out there on, on Twitter and they like to post charts like this and they think it's a great opportunity. It may be, and you've got a lot, you know, as long as you have a level to trade off, that's, and as, as long as you're stopping yourself out, you know, you could use 653, but you know, this name isn't a downtrend. It's below the 200 day moving average. Um, it's below the 50 day moving average, which for me is um, if I, if I ever take a position in, in something like this that's in a downtrend, it's always going to be on the small side. I stick with trends. Um, I follow the price action. Um, so for me, this thing hit hitting 28 and all the way down to six bucks is an issue. Um, <laughs> but like I said, you could play with, you know, I was at the track at Saratoga this, this weekend and I participated, you know, so you could participate. So kind of like, you know, kind of same deal for these types of stocks and my, they are for me anyway, right? They're kind of the money that you go to and you use at the track or at the casino, um, you know, a uh, name under 10, 10 bucks. But again, that's me. I'm a little bit different than everybody else, and there's more than one way to make money in this um, in this market. That's clean energy stocks. Uh, um, the best performing group for the day was actually the Chinese Internet Group. Um, I noticed this about midday that the Chinese Internet Groups really were performing quite well. Um, best performing group out of out of this was you know, some of those names that really got beaten up. TAL, which we saw some more calls go up today, but we literally see calls go up in this like every other day. But did see another big block of calls that went up in um, in in TAL. So um, QFIN is is another uh, you know interesting one in terms of you know a name that I saw like a couple months ago was on the IBD 50 list, um, which I have issues with that list because you know the ETF IBD 50 underperforms. But this was like on the height of this thing was put on like the number one um, weighted name. And the um, and the IBD 50 and, and look at this thing 42 bucks down to 21. Um, I don't think that they're in the top 10 anymore, but um, nevertheless, that was one of your best performing names over there too. PDD, which is another name that we see call action, whether the name goes up or goes down. Um, and then of course uh, your your Bitcoin names, which were very strong. Uh, or crypto names, I should say. This is the block ETF. I think this goes to, 20, to excuse me, 52. Um, that's the version point of control up there. Um, this was something that we put into the TTG trend portfolio last week uh, and is making some, has made some really nice gains since we added that. I think we, we added that on Thursday, 
right? So on the first break of the value area. Um, so again, a little bit different for me. Like we've just looked at two charts, like a fuel cell. And, um, you know, if you see the difference between these two charts, this, notice that this got back above the two, it's 200 day moving average. It's above all the short term moving averages. It got above the value area for the month. And that's why it's a much different chart to me than something like this. Again, this is good to kind of look at, right? Some people don't like to wait until it gets above the 200 day moving average and gets above clearance. But, you know, in, in this sense, this was telling me something different. Right? It was telling me that price is above all these moving averages um, and showing strength and got above value. So um, different, you know, uh, different looking charts, one in an uptrend, one in not. Um, another name that, um, you know, I thought looked really good uh, on Friday was this, um, this Silvergate. Right, so I actually took two targets in this thing. I took a target around 121. It looks like this thing sold off at the end of the day because I, I my last target was um, right in here. So again, smart to take targets. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some more macro stuff in a second, but um, I took I actually took a target pre market at 118, and then this was yeah this was at 320. I took a target at 121. I was trying to get one. I was trying to get the target at 122. Right, there's a VPOC up here um, at 1, 124, but there's a you know. So again, sometimes it's it, it's close enough for me. Right, if you get a dollar away, sometimes I, I would rather take the target, even though it's um, it hasn't officially hit the target, um, than rather see it kind of sell off like this. So I'm holding. Uh, Last portion of the trade at this point, I hit two targets in this trade, and we'll see if we can hit 124. But again, nice, um, nice to take, you know, take targets. Um, you know, so again, here's our uh, here's our trades. Um, you know, I, I think I'm the only one on. Um, I don't know. I don't know if FinTwit, uh, but you know, I'm sure there's someone else who does it. But I don't know of anybody else who shows you their trades at the end of every day. We do this in the videos. Uh, we do this for members, of course. But I don't know anybody who does this publicly. Um, but we show our trades. I show my P&L at the end of the month. Um, very, we we are as transparent as it comes. Um, I don't I don't know very. I hardly know. I maybe. Um, counting on one hand, you know, how many people show their P&L at the end of the month, even though they um, may run a service. But, um, you know, so here, here's what we did um, for the day. So that that was that. Um, Tesla, Tesla's been kind of tough. You know, the only reason why I traded Tesla today was because it got an upgrade. And usually you get, you can catch a little bit of momentum, but I wasn't in this trade for long. It's just been too choppy, um, this Tesla. So I, I was in for a quick scalp trade for this 1480. Um, I just didn't know if I was going to be able to get any more out of this thing. So, so again, very quick. We was in this for less than an hour. Here's my entries for SEDG. Like I said, I did take a quick target. Um, there was a there was a five minute VPOC that was in front of it. Um, that's why I decided to take a target, even though it was just three dollars away. Um, a couple other things. Um, you know, we can get into some more charts here, but. You know, I talked about this one. Um, didn't really do much, HCNP, but I'm I'm looking to kind of leg into this thing, you know, as it sits back. And we're seeing this out of a lot of names. Um, Datadog is another one that I'm watching, right? Kind of consolidating the gains a little bit. Um, Net had a nice day today, right? Even though um, not the best reaction on earnings day, but um, but kind of hung in there. Their results were good. They just, you know. They, they had high, of course, there's going to be high expectations, but um, this thing is back to the highs. Roadblocks was had a huge day today. Notice where this stopped, right at the top of value. But still, um, you know, if you caught this thing today, at one point was up like 10, 11%, um, finished up 9.7%. So interesting. Um, this same reports tomorrow. Didn't have the same type of reaction, but should be an interesting report after the close. Unity software still kind of sitting around. Um, you know, I, I heard about this name so much back in February about how great this name was. It, you know, maybe um, this earnings report will get this name to kind of get going a bit. Um, but it's really been an underperformer. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe that this earnings report can, can turn this name around. We are seeing some earnings positioning uh, as well. Um, of course, I wanted to talk about Moderna. Um, huge day again. Um, my phrase that I'm, I'll put this out on Twitter later, but, you know, 
I've seen a lot of people try to kind of get in front of this thing to say, oh, this name shouldn't be going up this much. But I think, you know, always as a trend trader, I'm always going to stick to the direction of the tra trade. I've seen people try to short this thing when it was at 260, 280, 300, 375, 425, and trying to short it again today. Um, it is what it is. I, I, I would rather get on a moving train rather than get in front of a moving train and try to stop it. Um, so again, I think that's a pretty catchy phrase. <laughs> Somebody told me that uh, last week or mentioned that expression to me. I love it. Uh, I would rather get on a moving train like this rather than try to try to get in front of it. Um, much better. Interesting, by the way, and I talked a little bit about this, the difference in the biotech ETFs. Um, the reason why this IBB is acting so much better than XBI is because it's Moderna. Right? If you look at the biggest weight in this thing, it's Moderna. So Moderna is driving the price action. It's over 10% of this ETF, right? So um, that is driving this this um, this uh, biotech ETF. Just like you know, remember like back back in the days of the short squeeze that happened, you know, back in the beginning of the year. Uh, same thing with this happened with this XRT ETF. All the meme stocks. Um, we're going crazy and brought this thing up from 61 bucks to 99, which you never see that happen out of a out of the retail ETF. But you know, one or two names can drive the performance, and that's what's going on with with um, the biotech ETF. And we got long this thing um, about a month ago, so um, this is working to to our advantage right now. Um, Pfizer also seeing a lot of call activity today, and that is also has a similar look to it, not quite not quite as aggressive. As, uh, as Moderna, but also very strong and behaving differently, um, you know, for what Pfizer normally does, right? It's a very, very um, strong performance and, and they're buying calls today, um, thinking that this thing, you know, maybe makes us, maybe not a, the exact same move or similar move, but maybe it has a lot more in the tank um, for this one. So we, we talked about a couple different groups here. The steel names actually act, acted pretty well today too. And, um, um, what else did I want to, uh, you know, uh, like I said, uh, there's a few other names that, that acted pretty well too. Um, Snap, um, which we saw some strength out of this name. You know, again, remember strong earnings came in and settled down and looks like it wants to kind of take out, um, you know, more highs. Um, Shop looks kind of interesting. I was look, I was watching this name last week, right? Again, another name that had strong earnings, but um, having a difficult time getting out of earnings. So if you want a level for this one, it's going to be 1558, right? So you could set your alert and you can kind of wait until this thing comes out of the consolidation. But it looks pre pretty pretty darn close for Shopify. I would be watching this one. Um, Google was very strong today. Um, Google was up, you know, almost 1% for the day. Um, you could see the, the volume Right? There, there was some buying that was going on. If you look in the five-minute bar, um, you saw this a couple of times. You could see these green little bars here, right? this move out of here. So someone was a buyer of Google today. So um, another strong name. Square um, kind of fizzled a little bit, but um, you know, continue to watch this one. There was a lot of call buying early on with this one. Notice this took out the five-minute VPOC. Right, but then uh, I don't, I'm not really a fan of that uh, of that fade. Um, a couple other ones to watch, you know, CrowdStrike. Um, still for me, you know, we talked about this one last week. I put on a trade; it just didn't get there um, in terms of breaking higher. Watch this 267 level. Right, well, actually, that is yeah, 267.30. So again, what I do in my trading because I watch so many names and you know looking for these momentum names to kind of break higher, you just set an alert, set an alert, and forget it. Um, and that would be you know look at the consolidation that this thing is putting in. So I'm waiting, waiting for this thing to break higher as I did. Um, I thought it was going to happen on Thursday of um, of last week, and of course it just it just didn't just didn't make it. Um, last week. All right, guys. So that's it. You know, I think there's there's plenty of other names out there um, that have been moving, and you know, so even though flat market for the day, um, you know, definitely some some outperforming growth names. Um, the last thing I was going to say, you know, so I talked about this in Thursday's video, and of course we talked about it during the day in the trading room, but 
you know, I talked about how the jobs report could be a little bit of a game changer, right? I, I saw a lot of people um, on Twitter on Friday that were like, um, that were confused. They're like, well, geez, what's going on? You know, what a, what a crazy day in the market. Well, not really. When you have big economics, you got to look at the bigger, in my opinion, you have to look at the bigger picture first and just realize that you may have some things macro related right, that may dictate what the market does, like Friday's jobs report, right, and when there's a big jobs report, bonds are going to move. When you have a big move in yields, you're going to see some rotations on the tape, right, you're going to see some rotations into some of the under-owned areas and some profit taking in the names that worked really well. So why do I say this, why do I bring this up now, other than to give myself a little pat on the back for telling people on in Thursday's video that you better be aware that there's a, <laughs> that there's a jobs report that everybody's watching on Friday. What will everybody be watching on Wednesday? Well, another gauge of inflation. I can't believe it's already a month already, but we do have the CPI report, right? Everybody's gonna be talking about that. That comes out on 8.30 on Wednesday. So if you want to make some adjustments to your portfolio, uh, because everybody's going to be talking about the inflation report, which they're looking for a half percent increase, right? You could do that tomorrow before the close. Take a look at your portfolio. Realize what kind of risk you have on, right? What you may be exposed on, right? Because, you know, everybody knows at this point that August is not a very strong seasonal month. So, you know, be mindful of what you can control, which is your risk. Okay, um, and then we also have the PPI report later in the week, and we've got a ton of Fed speakers that are going to like jostle for position with trying to say something really important this week. All right, so it is what it is. I would like to say that we've got a clear path, you know, to put on to put on risk and not too many bumps in the road. But I think it will be continue to be kind of a bumpy week, especially with the CPI report. All right. So um, what's nice is if you're positioned appropriately. Um, you know, for some of these bumps in the road, you could take advantage of them rather than com be in complete defensive mode, right? I like to be in offensive mode when we have dips on the, you know, dips or a little bit of, um, you know, a choppy tape where we're exploring ranges. I like to be playing offense, not defense. So that's just me. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.